Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome to today's show. What you're about to see is an establishment in the making. This is truck preservation at its very best. Join me now as I introduce you to the International Truck Shed in this week's Classic Restos on the Road. As you know, Pace Farm Eggs has been supporting Classic Restos for quite some time now. And there's a reason. The owner is Frank Pace. Quite a few years ago, I featured some of Frank's personal truck collection on an episode of Classic Restos. And Frank was so impressed with what he saw on the show, he has supported Classic Restos ever since. But since then, look what Frank has created. This is amazing, but before I start, I have to say this. Trucks run deep with Frank. His love for trucks began right here with his first truck, a 1953 International. Just before Frank acquired this truck many decades ago, it used to cart drums of petrol from Goulburn to Sydney, and now fixed in time like a stone set. Here she sits, painstakingly restored. There are almost 50 trucks here in this museum that Frank has decided to design and build located on 16 acres west of Sydney, New South Wales. The international models in here will blow your tractor hat off. Every model can be found from the early C, D, K, L, R, S, AA, AB, C and D line. It's a classic truck smorgasbord with the sweets thrown in. As I have mentioned before on Classic Restos, we have to nurture museums and private collections that appear. It's always about the history, the legacy and respect for these vehicles and past owners that carried Australia. And here's the gentleman we blame for such an establishment, Frank Pace. Welcome to the show, Frank. Thank you, Fletch. Always been a follower, mate. It's people like you that keep the history of old trucks going. I respect that. Well, thank you. And you've been a supporter for a long time. Not the easiest guy in the world to, to try and track down. He's a very busy man. You've always got agendas. You've always got something going on. For the past few years, it's been this place here. Absolutely amazing. But before we start talking about the collection here, I, uh, really I know from we'll the past too. episode of Classic Restos, I was at Frank's place with his private collection of trucks. Well, since then, he's still got some at home, <laughs> but there's this new location. We'll get to that in a moment. Have to talk about the truck behind us, Frank. This is where it all started with you. It's a 1953 International. It was a, getting towards being an old truck when you bought it. Tell us the story there. Well, being the son of a market gardener, Lived out west in the western suburbs of Sydney. Left school at an early age. My dream didn't have a lot. All I wanted to do was drive a truck. And when the old man got this truck, I fell in love with it. I used to wash it, paint the wheels. And when I could, I'd, I'd learn to drive it. And I drove vegetables into the market, the hay market of Sydney. And that was basically my life. And since then, well... I put it aside for a while, we stood on it, we built chook sheds, we did everything on it. Then I decided to restore it, to bring it back to its original condition. It's got plenty of cousins in here. I, I just cannot believe you look along the line of internationals here, all painstakingly restored. This stage of your career, where you're at in your life now, you must be proud. You must be very proud of what you've got here, Frank. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of the people that I've got working with me because through them, I keep going. You're a good man with a big heart. You, you've helped a lot of people. You support a lot of things. And I think a reflection um, of your 
contributions is coming back to you here with this place. What's the plan? What do you have in store here? Well, my initial plan was to have a museum where we could get maybe some retired people to come and, you know, man it and have a couple of guys keep restoring and whatever proceeds we've had would be enough to supply that and any, any extra would go to a charity. Now, Frank, as we move around, we find another room. We've got a board behind us. I know it's very emotional to you. Your daughter put it together for your 70th birthday, which was only a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, tell us about the, the story board behind us. When I turned 70, my daughter said, and they're all the family, but said we'd need to uh, have a bit of a party and recognition. It's nice to get your friends together and have a party. So uh, she surprised me with putting a, a, a collection of photos on the board and it brings back all the stages of your life, you know. It brings you back down to how you started. We had nothing, not saying I've got a lot. You see how the things just expanded. And uh, yeah, I'm very proud of my family. Very proud of basically my life all the way through and all the people around me, they're all just beautiful people. Early shots there when you're in the, um, the shed with what, about a million chickens at that point you had? That's a bit later in life that that farm got we commissioned that farm 2002 and it's a million bird operation. It is, I think, the nicest farm in Australia, egg farm I've had. How many chickens would you have now? Oh, I don't know, probably three to four million, I don't know, something like that. How many, on a weekly basis, how many eggs come out? Oh, we've, we sell between around the four million eggs a day. That's a fair few eggs. It's a, We've got a few contractors in with us as well. It's a lot of that's a lot of breakfasts. That's yeah, a, a lot of eggs. The incredible edible egg. Remember, an egg a day is great. A paste farm eggs is even better. <laughs> I've been waiting for this opportunity. <laughs> I've had people say, Fletch, you've got paste farm eggs on your show, yeah. and uh, now you know why because of this great guy right here. <laughs> We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified service network. Also to a reflection of what you've done, you've also received an Order of Australia as well. Yeah, I don't want to tell too many people about that, but yes, I have. It's a great honour to be uh, recognised by your, by your mates because I didn't know I had it till the day it was presented to me. It's a big thing, Frank. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more than I realised it was, but it's been a great honour. Oh, yeah. thank everybody for He's that. a very humble man. Now, we've moved outside of the uh, room where we found the wall of those beautiful photos of Frank's family and a bit of his history. We've got memorabilia behind us. Now, it, it's still in, I guess, the early stages, but this is the uh, a memorabilia wall made out of some beautiful pallet wood. What can you tell us about this little feature? Well, we'll start off with the wood that it's all placed on. They were part of chicken sheds yeah. and... Uh, as times progress, we've had farms where the real estates came out. We've had to leave those farms, but we demolished them and we kept everything, the timber, the iron, as much as we could. So the rusty iron on top were chicken roofs. The timber the, on the wall, they were walkways in the shed. The 4B2s underneath it were kept, kept the roof up. So with the help of some beautiful friends, we just put it all back together. I have one bloke in particular, I call him Louis. He's magic and uh, he just puts anything that looks pretty worn out, he can make it look beautiful. I mean, had you told me this over the phone, I, I would have thought immediately that it was foul. 
It was very foul. But it's not, it's quite nice. It was very foul. It all come from amongst the fouls. <laughs> good one, boy. Yeah. No, but it comes up, it looks good. In today's world, you know, everything recycles, regenerates. What we used to throw out today, people want to pick it up and pay your money for. The old door off the truck there and the badges on the outside, signs that you found, spark plugs up there on the shell board, even um, down to going into service stations years ago and seeing the oil there, you'd take it off the rack in the glass bottle and put a put a litre of oil in yourself and, um, you know, you, you should do that back in those days and um, you forget about those things until yeah. that sort of stuff reminds you. A lot of this I've picked up from around the traps because I had this in mind to put it all together. Some of it is still of my own um, and I've still got a bit more stashed away to exhibit one day. Yeah. Hey, check this out. I've got a classic international truck behind us here. I've never seen this before. I've seen some innovative things, Frank. Been to a few countries doing classic restos, but this has got to take the cake. Beautiful timber tray split down the centre where you can walk, and he's got his own coffee machine up there behind the back of the cab. Yeah, well, this is part of the dream. Hopefully next time you come around, Fletch will uh, have a cup of coffee around it. And no, you haven't got it plugged in today. Not yet, mate. Sorry about that yet. Everything he's done here, and he just forgot the extension cord for this morning. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's a beautiful job. Now, we're going to catch up with a guy that's done a lot of your timber work very soon. Yes. Uh, what a craftsman. I think they only made one of them in the world, and I've been blessed to have his, his presence, the efforts of what he's done for me. He's just a brilliant, humble, beautiful human being. Yeah. Now, Frank, all these trucks are obviously dear to your heart. The truck behind us, a 1952, an AL-130, restored to perfection. What can you tell us about it? Um, the L model had a little bit more chrome, had a little bit more classic character about it. I love the R model. I've got all the R models. But after, after having the R model, I always respected the L model. And uh, I found this little 130, it wasn't in too good a shape. And we've done a lot of work and with the boys around that I've got with me, we turned it into a, a one-off type truck. It's absolutely beautiful, the back, the tray on it, the woodwork on it, it all runs perfect and it's still original. It's not just everything on it is still original. What sort of engine up front? They got a 240, ABD 240 International six cylinder engine. Tough as nails too. Yeah, they're bulletproof. They won't win the race, but they'll keep going. I've got a comment too on the on the timber work, as uh, the mud guards around the the back the back tyres. I I don't think I've ever seen timber work like that before, Frank. The story to that is um, when I first uh, started on this, Louis. I'm talking to Louis, and I said, Louis, we're going to use this timber, and he said, it's sort of his first approach. And once he started, he got the bug and he was making it, getting enthused about it. And then I come with the mud guards. And uh, he said, we're doing them out of timber. I said, why not? You know, I was thinking it wouldn't be. And what a wonderful job he's done with them. It well, looks magic, you will see. And this is all recycled timber, all timber that was part of my life in, a, in the chip farm. But I built my farm on second-hand stuff. I, you know... We started with nothing. And all the timber had been reused then. We have put it up, pulled it down, and anything that was still good, we have still recycling it. Frank, I've got to say too, I've got an enormous amount of respect for our immigrants to this country. Um, your father from Malta, I Maltese, yeah. came out here in 1921 to the land of opportunity back then, and look what happened. Yes, he's done marvellous. He came here, 16 year old, on his own, went to Kyogo, laid railway tracks, spent a year up there. I just can't imagine a 16 year old boy doing that. And he became very successful. I'm very proud of my dad. And uh, yeah, sorry, I'll get emotional. Okay, the apples don't fall far from the tree. The land of opportunity back then, you, your father came here with nothing, built a, built a, a little empire and you, you, you followed suit with that. And uh, that's a fantastic accolade. Yeah, no, I'm very proud. Now, Frank, you've got to be the coolest trucker on the block. Check this out, 1969, C1100 behind us here. You drove it here today. How, how cool are you? I mean, this is a nice looking truck. This would, 
who watching this episode would not like this little blue truck in their shed? It's beautiful. It turns a lot of heads, uh, Fletch. Um, the truck has actually got C1300 running gear underneath it. I bought it off a fellow who only lived three, three blocks down, three houses down the road from me. I couldn't believe it. He came to see me. And he, I met him in a shopping centre. In, I was in another inter. He said, I got one, and I went and had a look at it, and it was this one. And um, anyway, I smicked it up a bit, but it wasn't too bad. Love the uh, the bogey rear end. That yeah. gives it a bit of a fatter stance, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, this has actually got the C1300, which is that all the running gears is slightly bigger. There was 1100 and 1300. It's just got all that on it on it now. That's how he had it. Frank, you could put the fifth wheel van on this and pull it around Australia. Well, what the fellow used to do, he used to cut uh, mobile homes, mm -hmm. take them to site back in the day, and he's even taken a home from here to Western Australia on it. All right, so she's done a bit. And uh, since I've had it, still got the same engine in it. He had replaced the motor once, mm -hmm. but I've got, it's been the same, it's still all original in that area. And she just goes every day. I drive it. All these stories we hear over all these decades, like we're, we're talking, we're talking old technology, but it's just so good on every episode of the show. Well, obviously, that's what it showcases the the older stuff. But when we stop and think about how many older type engines in the year of 2021 still turnkey go, might not have had the cylinder heads removed in 50 years and all this sort of stuff. It's just a testament. It's marvellous how they keep going and you don't, I'm not a mechanic by no means, but I can usually get one of these. Yeah, but you know a lot about eggs. <laughs> I know a bit about eggs, yes. And I'm not, and I'm not yoking. <laughs> That's right. I didn't mean to crack you up, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, mate, he's full of it. Good on you, man. <laughs> I love you, Fletch. Keep it up. I love people talking about eggs. It's okay. I'm just stopping for lunch. Hmm. Welcome to television. When I was a kid, I loved cars. Still do. The 57 Cadillac Eldorado Brian was the most advanced car in the world. Cost more than a Rolls. Hand built with a stainless steel roof, cruise control, electric seats, and would you believe, air suspension. American iron. It's a passion Shannons understand. That's why they ensure my daily drive, the caddy, my bike, even the house. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. If you own a classic, could be a little truck like this one, make sure it's insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And keep in mind too, that the Shannon's Club awaits you with their own in-house productions, such as Shannon's Club TV, Legends of Motorsport, Driven, End of an Era. You can watch classic restos there as well, along with a host of other really cool content as Australia's largest automotive online hub. For more information, visit shannons.com now behind the scenes, Frank is very lucky to have a team of very talented guys. How are you doing, Louis? Good, Fletch. That's good. Now, what do you specialise in? I'm jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> okay, the vehicle behind me, you do the timber work? Yeah, yeah, the timber work, my Leah. So, Lou, you've had an integral part. Of, you've, you've played a, a, a lot in here with the vehicles yeah. on display, right? Yep, yeah. yeah. Good on you, Louis. Well, it, it's really, you know, you, you walk into a place like this and you see the, the presentation of the vehicles. And, yeah, these guys behind the scenes do a great job. Good on you, Louis. Thanks, Fletch. What do you do here, Brian? Well, I, I help Louis and anyone else here to, um, to achieve some of the work that gets done here. Some of the skills? I, I do help Lou with timber work. I, I kind of specialise in doing all the fancy scalloping of all the timber. Yeah. Louis cuts it all out. And I finish it off, and, yeah. and then we, we put it all back together. You're a great team, the two of you, aren't you? My word, yeah. Well, it's a testament to your, to your workmanship right behind us here. Uh, the vehicle behind us, for example, like, how much time can go into that? Well, um, this is quite a special vehicle, actually. Um, I've been around trucks for a long time, and this is the most authentic restoration I think you'll see in this type of vehicle. 
Uh, it, because we started with a, um, a, a pretty rotten sort of a template and it just replicated all the pieces. I guess to, to replicate some parts too, you might not have other bits of, of best quality to go on too. So in terms of determining size and diameters and thicknesses of steel, is it a little bit of discretion work along the way as well? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think I, I try to think about how things were made back then mm. and try and replicate that yeah. into, into vehicles like this. Yeah. Good on you, Brian. An integral part here of uh, Frank's collection. And, uh, yeah, you, uh, you do outstanding work, mate. Well done. Thanks, Lich. Yeah. Now, when it comes time to the spray painting, that's a work of art. How are you, Pete? Not bad, Fletch. Thank that's, you. That's great. Are you having a good day? Yes, mate. Good on you, mate. Now, the truck behind us, you've painted this. It's beautiful. Yeah, well, it helps when they're not too badly beaten up, too. Absolutely. Now, that's got to be a slingshot start when the, when the body's not too bad, right? Yep. So not a lot of rust to cut out of the old girl? No, it was very clean. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Pete, thanks for your quick interview because the truck behind us, that, that, that's, you've done a wonderful job and uh, that, that's a work of art. You should be proud of that. I am, thank you. Good on you. Thank you. All right, thanks. Pete, no worries, mate. We'll catch you next time, hey? Yep. Thanks. Next bloke that's up for a chat that I can't keep quiet. How are you, Mark? Good, thanks, Fletch, yes. What do you, what do, you do here for Frank? Uh, panel beater spray painter. There you go. There's a few of you. Yeah, there's two very good ones, actually, yeah. um, us old boys. Yeah. Isn't that good? Uh, yeah, there's not many tradesmen um, of our generation um, uh, left because uh, these days there are more so panel fitters than yeah. panel beaters. Um, and spray painting, that's something we sort of picked up over the years. Yeah. Good on you, Mark. Well, thanks for coming along and being a part of this episode. Um, it's a special episode uh, for Frank, and it's just a, it's a testament, it's a, it's a tribute to, um, you know, the way that he looks upon classic trucks and holds them so high. And to be on display like this is really something special. So thanks, Mark. Thank you, Fletch. This place is somewhere, it's actually a fulfillment of my dream to have, uh, to be able to present a little bit of my appreciation and work that I've done through the years and to work with the people that have meant so much to me. My family enjoy it and to work alongside people that I've worked with all my life. And not to be in so big a rush, we can do a bit, stop, start, and then seeing it all together, it's magic. They're the sort of things that give me joy. And of course, to actually share and uh, meet people like you, Fletch, who do the hard yards, you're spreading the news everywhere. And uh, if, we, if I can be part of the trucking history, it gives me a lot of joy. I've been a, an egg man or a chicken man all my life. But my joy and my hobby and uh, where I love to enjoy myself is around trucks. And the camaraderie that I've had with some beautiful people that I talk to, I can talk to them for hours. I never get tired of it. We have so much in common. That's a wonderful thing with truck drivers. Regardless of what they drive, what they've got, they've always got time to sit and have a chat. And, uh, you know, I, I belong to the Western Sydney uh, Historical Truck Club. Great bunch of people through them. You meet people like Chapo and all his mates. And also, like in Vic, when we do runs, we go to Victoria and uh, met a lot of people down there. And no matter where we go, I've been overseas, done with the ATHS, and I've been to different conventions in in Salt Lake City, in uh, Yakima, in Seattle, and driven trucks there. And it was just like people of, you knew all your life. You know, a guy just said, here, yeah, you're gonna go to the show tomorrow? Yeah, he said, well, you better drive a truck up. I drove an old KB11 from Salt Lake City to Sonoma, about 200 miles off Treacherous Road. And you feel quite, it's, what an experience, you know? And when you sit and talk to these people, invite you home, into their house, just nothing's a problem. And that's a camaraderie that I've experienced with truckies. And I love it. 
Thank you, Frank, for everything you have done for the Classic Truck Fraternity, the support you give people, and, of course, uh, your endless support for Classic Restos as well, which is uh, greatly appreciated for the show to uh, keep on going and, you know, attributing to get it to the point of where it is. Uh, what you've done here is amazing, and I know you've still got more to go and going to be back down the track, right? I hope so, Fletch, because as proud as I am of it, it's not finished yet. There's more that I'd like to show you, present to you, you know, and uh, I'm sure you'll think of something. You're, you're the man of ideas and um, the place is always open for you, mate. Oh, thank right. you, very, thank you, Frank. I'm, I'm waiting for the cafe to go in. Uh, well, it's nearly there. We got the, we got the coffee machine. Yeah. So uh, hopefully in about the next time you're around, it'll be running. All right. All right. Frank, thank you very much. Thank you, mate. It's a pleasure. Every classic truck has history. Every classic truck tells a story. And Frank Pace is doing his bit to help them keep their dream alive. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.